this video I'm going to have a look at the process used to build a rain garden in a backyard. And this rain garden solved a couple problems. One was that part of the garden was lower and it collected water anyways. So it made sense to turn it into a feature of the garden rather than just a wet area that was always full of muck. This rain garden is quite unique in that part of it will be used as a deck for seating. Here are some shots of the garden before any of the work was started. It has a nice shed at the back with some extra seating area. The side of the house looks pretty plain and quite honestly is quite old. So at the same time as putting in the rain garden, this homeowner also improved the backyard features. And this is always a good idea. Don't design one small area of the garden. Try and design the whole thing. You don't have to implement the whole thing, but at least take the time to design it so you know where things will go. In this garden, this fence will be taken down and put up here. Once you know what you're doing in the garden, it's important to decide on what is the best order of doing things. In this case, since some of the work is going to be done on the fence, that came first. The rain garden is going to go where this red machine is sitting, and if we tried to do the rain garden first, you couldn't get the machinery in there to redig the post holes for the fence. And the homeowner decided to put in a poured sidewalk that goes from the shed to the back of the house where the patio is sitting. This dirt area to the left of the walkway is where the rain garden is going to go. Now, why would you put it in this spot? Well, it's a good idea to have a look at the land and see where the water collects naturally. Now on the left side of this shed is a downspout and it's collecting water into a rain barrel and the overflow from that rain barrel has to go somewhere. If you look at the slope of this property, you see that it slopes towards that fence. And so when it rains, all the water collects down on this side of the garden. And that's why it's a natural place for a rain garden. So step one is to dig out some of the soil. In this case, it wasn't used in the garden, so it had to be trucked away. You want to make the depth of the rain garden deep enough so it will hold all of this excess water. So it's not a bad idea to observe the garden after a couple heavy rains and see how much water you really have to deal with. Here's what it looks like after the trench was dug. You can see that it holds the water from this rain event quite nicely. As the hole was being dug, the extra stones were collected. You're going to need a lot of stone to make the rain garden, so you might as well repurpose the ones that you dig up anyways. Saves you bringing more stone into the garden. And you can see the collected stone at the base of the fence. The soil here has a lot of clay in it, and it doesn't drain very quickly. So the homeowner added some gravel into the bottom of this hole. Now a lot of people think that putting gravel at the bottom of a hole like this will increase drainage, but it really doesn't. What the gravel does is it does create a lot of air pockets, and when it rains those air pockets can be filled with water. But it's a complete myth that gravel like this will increase drainage. The rain garden is moving along nicely, and you can start to see the final design here. The area was divided in two. The front area is going to be used for a very traditional rain garden with lots of rocks and a few plants. The back half, though, is covered up with a deck. Now the water can flow underneath this deck. So this deck is actually a very large bridge, but it's going to be used for extra seating. And that's a big advantage in this yard, which isn't that big. The rain garden is still there underneath the deck, and it will hold water. You just don't see it because you've covered it up with the wood. The visible areas of the rain garden have now been filled with more river rock. And you'll notice that a variety of different sizes of rock have been added. This makes this artificial riverbed look much more realistic. Try and mix up those stones and add in a couple really big ones as an accent. A better quality soil was added around the edges, and then the planting can be started. A wide range of plants can be used here, but you have to keep in mind that at certain times of the year, this is going to be a wet area. So we want to pick plants that don't mind extra moisture around their roots. And don't forget those personal touches. 
like these torches and a little gnome and a little duck. These personal touches will make the final rain garden yours and make it quite different than all of the other ones on the street. You can see in this picture how nice this deck is. You've got a table and a couple chairs. It's a perfect place to sit and enjoy some wine after a hard day in the garden. So how well does this rain garden work? Well, here's a picture in the middle of a rainstorm. The area that was dug up is slowly filling with water which is exactly what you want to see. Now, if you've built it large enough, it won't overflow even on a fairly heavy rain. Now you can see another source of water. The downspout on the house goes into a rain barrel. Once the rain barrel is full, the excess water has to go somewhere. So an extension has been added to the downspout to draw that water out into the garden away from the house and remember, this area is sloped towards the fence, so all that water now will run into the rain garden. This planning of where the water runs and how it will travel across the ground is a critical step in planning the rain garden. So here's a look at the finished backyard. It's now a really nice space with lots of space for guests, and it's got this interesting garden. Now let's have a look at some before and after pictures so you can see how the transformation changed the backyard. Here's a final view of the garden the following summer. The plants are grown in, the knickknacks have been added, it's a great part of the garden. If you want to learn more about making a rain garden on your property, click on the link in the top right hand corner and you'll see a number of videos on how to build them, how to design them, how to pick your plants, and other examples of rain gardens. Have fun redesigning your garden.